Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to continue our Django REST framework and React portfolio website. And in this video, we're going to build out a simple API. So in the previous video, we set up all of our stuff. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus strictly on the back end. So I can close out all these front end files here. And we're going to go ahead and just create an education, a work, and a portfolio model with the serializers and view sets for that. And then we will use that in our front end to create a basic portfolio. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our models. So if we go into our back end here in the API, we go to portfolio, we'll have a models.py file. And if you're unfamiliar with Django or the Django REST framework, I'll put links to the tutorial series below in case you need a starting point. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on models uh, since we've already done that in previous series. Uh, you can go watch it there if you need a refresher on that. But let's go ahead and create our first model. So we'll create a class. We'll call this one education. And this will be used obviously to store uh, any de details on the education that you have completed. So we'll create a few different fields here. First will be the school. And this will be a models.char field. And we'll set a max length equal to 255. I'll go ahead and create a degree field as well. And this will be a field to hold just a text of whatever degree you created or you completed. And we'll do a chart field again with a max length, once again, of 255. Um, you probably can make these smaller if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep them larger uh, for now. Next we'll have is a years. So this will be a models.char field once again. And this will just be the text. So that way we can, we can put things like uh, dash present or, or something else, or you can format any way you want. Um, you could use a, a date field here if you want, but I'm going to stick to just years. Or I'm going to stick just to a char field. And a max link, I'll set this to 25. That should be enough characters. Uh, next, we need a description. And this will do a models dot uh, text field, since it's going to be a longer text field. And then finally, we'll put an ordinal. And this will be used just to order things any way we want. Uh, it'll be easier than trying to do something else. Um, so we'll create an integer, integer field here, and we'll leave nothing inside of the arguments there. And that'll be our education model. Uh, maybe we'll come back and add more later, but for now, that should be enough to get started. Uh, next we'll have is a work, and this will hold any work experience you have. So we'll do a models.model .model once again. And these fields will be kind of similar. We'll have a company, and this will be a models.char field. A max length equaling to 255. Um, we'll do a years, and this will equal once again a models.char field, a max length once again of 25. Then we'll create a description field. This will be the same as the other one, models.text field, and then we'll have an ordinal, and once again, models.integer field, just like that. And finally, let's go ahead and create a portfolio model. And this will be hold, used to hold any sort of like portfolio work that you want to showcase on the website. So we'll create a portfolio class models.model. We'll do a title equaling models.char field. Max length equaling 255 once again. Then we'll create a description. This will be a models.text field. We'll create an image and we'll use models.image field here. And I'm going to go ahead and inside of the root of the API, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it uploads. And this is where we're going to upload all of our images. So we can pass in an argument here upload underscore two equals slash uploads. And that will upload it into the uploads folder for us. Now that will just help. Actually, this should be uploads with the slash at the end. Uh, but this will help just organize it a little bit better instead of having them all just in the root we'll keep in a folder there and then we'll need a url and this will be a url to github or to the demo site or whatever it is that you want and we'll do a models.url field for that and then finally we'll put an ordinal once again just to order things any way we want so do a models.integer field just like that okay so we'll save that and for this image field we also want to make sure we install pillow so right now I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal right in here. Um, 
open in terminal. And I'll go ahead and first do a source env slash bin slash activate to activate my virtual environment. I'll cd in the API. Um, I guess I don't need to do that, but that's fine. Do a pip install pillow to install pillow. And now we should be good there. Now with all these changes done, let's go ahead and migrate them to the database. So once again, I can do a Python 3 manage.py make migrations and th this said no changes detected and that's because we didn't add our portfolio app to our settings.py so underneath rest framework here we're going to add portfolio add a comma there now if we do this with that change you'll now see it create the migrations for our portfolio app so make sure if you did it previously um, if you forgot that in the last video make sure you put portfolio inside your installed apps in your settings.py file now that we have the migrations made, let's go ahead and migrate the changes just like that with Python 3 manage.py migrate. Okay, perfect. Now with those changes done, let's go ahead and create our serializers and our views and then our URLs. So we'll follow the same pattern of just how to create endpoints using the REST framework. We're gonna use view sets and our views to keep it simple. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first step will be to create a serializer. So what I'll do here is I'll go underneath my user serializer here. I'll create a class. I'll create one called education serializer. And we'll do serializers.model serializer. Do a class of meta. And this will have a model equaling education. And we'll need to import that in a second. And then our fields will equal. And I'll use the shorthand of double underscore all double underscore to get all of the fields. And I'll create a class work serializer uh, serializers dot model serializer and then once again a class meta and we'll do a model equaling uh, work this time and then we'll do a fields equaling double underscore all once again double underscore to get all of the fields and then we'll create one more serializer here portfolio serializer serializers dot model serializer class meta model equaling portfolio and fields equaling double underscore all double underscore Okay, so we're not gonna do anything special with our serializers right now. We're just gonna get the model serializer to automatically create all the stuff we need for a model. In this case, we're using our education, work, and portfolio models to uh, do that. Uh, so all we need to create our serializer is just a few lines of code here. Let's make sure we import that. So from dot models import, uh, we need education, work, and portfolio. There we go. Okay, and we'll save that. Now let's go ahead and create a views.py uh, or a view set for each of our serializers. So what we'll do here is we'll go below this view set right here and I'll create a class. And we'll start with our education view set. This will be from view sets dot model view set. And then inside our view set, we need three different lines. So first we need is a query set. And this will be education.objects.all. And this will just get all of the education objects. We're not going to do any filtering. We're not going to do anything else there. We're just going to grab all of them. Below that, we need to go ahead and set our serializer class. So we'll create a line here, serializer class equals. And this will be the serializer we created previously. So it'll be just education serializer. And I'll import everything here in a second. Um, but now for this last line, what we want to do is we want to set the permissions. So inside the documentation, you can you can find all sorts of different permission classes available. There's allow any, which allows anyone to do any method on this view set. Um, there's uh, is authenticated, which allows only authenticated users to do anything on this view set. But we also have one that's called is authenticated or read only. And what that will do is for methods like a get request, it will allow you allow anyone to get the objects. But for like a post, a put, a delete, um, you'll have to be logged in. 
So that's what we'll do here. That way we can allow anyone to see our education or our portfolio or our work, but only, only, only we can actually update the data uh, in the database. So what I can do here is do permission classes equals and then a list here and we'll do is authenticated or read only. Now, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and import everything. So up here at the top, uh, we imported permissions already. So I guess what I can do here is I can either change this from from rest framework dot permissions import is authenticated or read only. Um, or I could have added permissions dot is authenticated read only down here as well. Either one would have worked. Um, next, I need to go ahead and uh, import all of the models and all of the serializers. We need the models for this line right here, and we need the serializer for this line right down here. So I'll do from dot models import education work portfolio. And up here in our dot serializers import, we want to import the the user serializer. We also want to import the education serializer, the work serializer, and the portfolio serializer. Just like that. Okay. And I think we should be good there now. Um, let's go ahead and save this and just to double check, let's run our server and see if we get any errors. So, uh, Python three manage.py run server. Um, and we're getting issues. Oh, since I changed this line right up here, uh, I need to make sure I update my user view set as well. So I remove the dot permissions down here and I'll add allow any up here as well. And that will fix that issue. Uh, we really don't need that user view set. If you want to, you can delete that, but I'll keep it there for now. Next, we'll create a class and we'll do a work view set. We'll do view sets dot model view set. Do a query set equaling uh, work dot objects dot all. Once again, to get all of the objects, we'll create a serializer class. Let me scroll down here so we have some more space. A serializer class, which will equal uh, work serializer. And then finally, we'll have permission classes, which will equal a list with is authenticated or read only. Then we go and create our portfolio view set as well. And this will be view sets dot model view set. Query set, once again portfolio dot objects dot all serializer class equaling um, port folio serializer and then permission classes will equal uh, is authenticated or read only it will save that okay so now we should have our view sets all created we'll check for any errors looks like we're good uh, now the last step will be to add it to our URLs so inside this portfolio, we already have the urls.py file that we created last time for our user view set. Let's go ahead and just register all the routes for our new view sets. So what we can do here is do a router.register and this will all kind of follow the same pattern. So the education will be at education. Uh, we'll do views.education view set. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this line down now a couple times. We'll do the same thing for the next two. So this one up here will be work view set. And this one will be portfolio view set. And the routes will be work and portfolio. So if you're not familiar with what I'm doing here, uh, I explained it a little bit more in the previous video of the series. So you can go back and watch that if you need to. But all we're really doing here is that we are just creating all of the routes at once with this router. So I don't have to worry about using IDs and creating a separate route to get a specific ID or anything like that. That's all handled here uh, automatically using this default router. Okay, let's check for any errors. Looks like we are good right now. Let's go ahead and go to the Browsable API, go to localhost 8000, and now you can see all of the different links here. I can click on education. It allows me to get them right now. I'm not logged in, so I can't do anything else. 
um, but I can go through here and get all of them. Um, but if I log in, I should be able to create one. So if I go click log in, and now that I'm logged in, if I go to one of these routes, education, we now can create a new education um, item here. So I can do test school, uh, bachelor's um, 2016 to 2020, um, test school, bachelor's, ordinal of one, we'll say, we'll post that. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and create another one if we want to. Test school two. Let's say it's a master's. And we'll do uh, 20 to 2022. Test school master's. And ordinal, we'll go up one more to two. And we'll post that. And now if we do a get, we'll get all of them. If I go and click on one, I can do a get on just that one. So if I went to education slash one. And then takes me to that one item. So all of my routes are set up and working correctly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create items for each of these things right now. Uh, I'm not going to create an admin panel for this website at the moment. So I'm going to create everything through this API. Uh, maybe at the end, I can go back and create an admin panel if that's something that would be useful. But for now, I'm going to use this to create all of the items. So let's go ahead and create a company now. We'll do a test company years, we'll just say 2016 to present description, test company, software developer, ordinal of one, and we'll post that. Let's go back and let's create some portfolio stuff here. Title, um, portfolio one, description, portfolio one project. Uh, URL www.test.com ordinal of one. Let's go and choose an image as well, and we'll post that. Um, oh, the URL need to have HTTP in front of it like that, and post that. There we go. Okay, and now we come back into our code here inside of uploads, and there's our file inside of our uploads folder. So that's all working correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and create one more now, just so we have some data to work with next time. Pick another file, set the ordinal here to two, and post that. Now if we do a git, we'll have our two items here. Okay, so now we, everything's working and set up correctly. Um, so that's a really quick and easy way to build an API with Django, uh, with the Django REST framework. In the next video, we'll go ahead and make some requests and build a front end to actually use and show all this data. Uh, so that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. All the code will be in the description below. And I hope to see you in the next video.